Hello. Hello, very good evening to you, brothers and sisters. Hello, brothers and sisters. A very good evening to you all. As we uh, just get a little update here in our community here of Richmond Hill, Ozone Park and South Ozone Park, I have a very important message to all of you. We um, we have been getting the vaccines, and a lot of people don't know about this, but the vaccines are being given at your college. Uh, that's 168th Street and Liberty Avenue. Very easy to find. It's by the athletic building. That is where they play, play the basketball. Just go to your college, 168th Street and Liberty Avenue, where they have the physical education center at your college, and you can make an appointment there. Of course, there are still priorities being given to essential workers and also people over 65. But here's the thing a lot of people are missing. A lot of our people have blood, high blood pressure, heart disease, asthmatic conditions, and these other um, health issues. So let them know that because then you'll be able to be included in the comorbidities category, meaning that you have a health condition. They won't uh, bring a doctor and check you out, but a lot of guys who suffer from the diabetes and the pre-diabetes, they suffer from heart because of high cholesterol, heart conditions. They suffer from breathing problems because of asthma and smoking. Hence, these folks are all unfortunately including in the high risk category. And therefore, you will qualify to get the vaccine. This site at your college gives 3,000 3, vaccines a day, 3,000 a day from eight in the morning to eight in the evening. That's from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So make sure you go there early. And if you do not qualify for the same day, they will give you an appointment in a few days time. But the whole intent and purpose of this is something set up by the, as a center called a mega site. And there's also one at um, Medgar Evans College. Medgar Evans has one. And your college has one. And these are all easily located. Liberty Avenue, 160th Street, and in Queens here. You just go down there, or you, uh, or you can go online. You can go to the, to the online site. Um, on the online site, I'm going to give you the... Uh, I'm going to give you the site where you can go and make an appointment online. And... Um, that site is, uh, you can go to vaccinefinder.nyc.gov. That's vaccinefinder, one word, V-A-C-C-I-N-E-F-I-N-D-E-R.nyc.gov. That is V-A-C-C-I-N-E-F-I-N-D-E-R.nyc.gov. Or you can go to nyc.gov slash COVID vaccine. nyc.gov slash, that's forward slash COVID vaccine. One word, C-O-V-I-D-V-A-C-C-I-N-E. Now, these places you can register online or you can go to the site physically. There are many um, soldiers there, guards, uh, army personnel that's running the site, and they're running it in a very efficient manner. You just park in the parking lot opposite or the street will have parking at your college there and you go in. Takes 15 minutes, the most. Tops, you're in and you're out. And they'll give you a date for your second shot. Um, so I wanted to pass this on to you before it's too late, before they run out, before other people come and get the vaccines before you. Even if you have a doubt and you're a very young person and you feel, well, I may not qualify, don't think like that. You go and you tell them, and they might probably give you a form to fill out showing that you have mental issues, if you have medical issues. You may have attention deficit disorder. You may have some sort of um, slowness or disability. You may have some kind of high cholesterol heart problem. You may have asthma. You, you may have, um, uh, you know, um, high blood pressure. This happens to a lot of people. Or, uh, you know, so so many other diseases there and, 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 and health conditions. You let them know about these health conditions. 
And um, they, they won't put you to a doctor to test you to see whether you have all these things, but you let them know what you have. And a lot of people have been suffering from blood pressure. I just came into you due to the uh, depression. You can also mention depression, which is a mental illness that will entitle you to get the vaccine. Uh, many of our residents here have been suffering from this sort of problem. So that don't say no, never say never in America. There is a chance that if you can get that vaccine, you will be able to, uh, you know, regularize your life, save your life. Many people have died. I just came off the funeral of a very good friend of mine, J.P. Singh, Jawala Pasad Singh, very healthy man, very nice man, man from the old school, poor guy died, and he was just like 60, 62. J.P. has to be 65 the most. I read, I've heard of the other person 52, another person 15. Other people, look at Sita Puran Pandey. Uh, the Nightingale of Guyana, who sang all these great, wonderful songs. She died. These folks don't want to die, so at the top of their lives, they don't want to go in this way. So this is the problem we have, that we have to get the vaccines. And since the governor and the uh, President Biden set up that FEMA vaccine site at um, your college, we fought a lot. We had to call here, call congressmen, lobby this, call Department of State, call Department of Health, call President's office, leave messages, um, you know, um, make a lot of noise and make and show because we are one of the highest rates of vaccines or, or the COVID pandemic in America. We have like 16, 17 percent. And that is due to the fact that we have a lot of people who do two and three jobs. It's not because the people are careless or they're reckless or they're not wearing their masks. But everyone is quick to criticize us in the Caribbean folks and people living in Richmond Hill, South Ozone Park, Ozone Park, Woodhaven, and, um, uh, and these areas. Southeast Queens are quick to uh, push us out. So you've got to push yourself back in. If you don't pull up a, cha a, a chair at a table of government, then you'll be left out. You will be on the menu. That means they will eat you, and in this case, they will bury you. A lot of our people have been dumped in Potter's Field in so ungracious manners. But people don't even know that they have died, and they just dumped them, these human bodies, in Potter's Field, where they die without any dignity. There's no fun set up. The funeral uh, places are not even uh, charging less. And look at the kind of businesses they're getting. They're getting hundreds of bodies. Some of them have gotten thousands. And um, they, they don't even give back to this community. They don't even give uh, terms of um, help and assistance or perhaps even a payment plan to people. So what I propose is that the government give us an emergency fund. We need a funding here to help bury our dead, to help bury our poor, to help the small businesses from dying. Many of the small businesses are dying. Many people are losing their homes. Many tenants are not paying the rent. There's no help for landlords. Give the landlords some help and assistance and also give them money to pay their mortgage or reduce the property taxes, reduce the water and sewer bills and reduce stuff so they can survive also and live the American dream. So you can't dig one hole to fill another hole. Tenants are not paying the rent and then the landlord loses his home. No, that is not what America is about. America is better than that. You've got to save people who have worked hard. Perhaps one may have a mortgage of 30 years or 15 years, out of the very last 10% of that time, he gets problems with the mortgages because the tenants are not paying the rent. And many tenants are abusing landlords. Let's get this straight. They can pay the rent, but they don't want to pay it because they're saying the governor said, don't pay the rent. Well, that is bad. They should be paying the rents also and also helping the landlord because uh, what you don't like for yourself, you shouldn't like for others also. So those are the updates I want to give you. And I wanted you to, to know that we are working very hard. We're trying to get government involved. We're trying to get funding. We pay a lot of taxes in this community. We need our businesses to be saved. We need our homes to be saved. We need our tenants to get help also. We need everybody to get help. We need taxi drivers um, not to go into bankruptcy and to save, get, their, get medallion help, get help from foreclosure, get help from bankruptcy. Everybody needs help. This community has always been shortchanged. We don't get any resources coming to us. We have always been um, treated as stepchildren. And this is wrong. We demand more and we ask for more from, the, from city, state, and federal government. And what you've got to do is to call your, your representatives. Don't be afraid to call them. You call David Weprin. You call Jennifer Rajkumar. 
You call um, Joe Adabo. He owes our community a lot. He should. He would not have been in office if it wasn't for Richmond Hill and Ozone Park. He knows that. Um, the Congressman Meeks, uh, City Council Adrian Adams, all these people work for us. We don't work for them. They're public servants. They're paid uh, decent money, over $100,000 a year. And they need to provide not their personal funds, but the taxes that we pay, the government funding from the resources that, are, that should be at their disposal, whether it's medical, economic, or otherwise. They need to send resources to our poor community. That this is a pandemic, nobody expected it. We are part of America and we need to get help. Hence, we're looking forward to that. Um, you know, the time has come when we need to get assistance here also and not to be left out. And we call on everyone in government and in the, and in the um, non, non governmental organizations and in the civil uh, and in the service organizations to help us. You don't want to just give a handout like a, a plate of food or like a, a meal. We need an institutional system of feeding people, of helping schools, of bringing resources here, of having computers and stuff like that, having an emergency humanitarian fund set up to help people who have had fires and have lost their loves, loved ones and cannot even bury their families who are deceased. This is a lot of pain and suffering, and people are dying. Everywhere you turn, people are, have died, either died or in a hospital or on their last breath. And that is tremendous, tremendous pain and suffering. Hence, that is why I'm asking you to go to your college or go online at uh, thevaccinefinder.com. And I'm going to repeat that because it's so important that you go online now. You don't have to go all the way to your college. Go online and let them know you have the high blood pressure and that you have cardiovascular disease and that you have uh, high um, uh, heart problems or that you have breathing problems with asthma or that you have depression. These are all qualifying categories that will help you to get vaccinated. Not until you die. You can't vaccine a vaccinate a dead person. But who cares? Do they have, did they ever care about the people who died in the nursing homes? So nobody's going to come to you and tell you, you know, oh, we, we would have given you the vaccine next week. JP, who died, when he could have qualified for the vaccine now, but they're like a few days too late. And this is the problem. They're always late with us here. Vaccinefinder.nyc.gov vaccine finder one word v v a c c i n e dot n y c dot gov vaccine dot n y c dot gov or n y c dot gov forward slash covid vaccine i repeat it n y c dot gov forward slash covid vaccine try to get to a computer let your grandchildren your nieces your nephews your neighbors help you to log on there or go to the library but the library is closed so you may have to go to an elected official's office like Eric Ulrich or David Weprin or one of these offices and um or Adrian Adams and tell them you need help in getting them to make a, a, a an appointment for you and they'll be able to get you um an appointment to get a vaccine at your college or you go to your college. Go to your college. It's right on Liberty Avenue, 160 Street and Liberty Avenue by the um, physical education building where the basketball games are played. You'll see a nice rotunda building, a wrong building, a wrong gymnasium. They have it there. They do 3,000 a day. 3,000 vaccine vaccinations per day at your college. And at another 3,000, I believe, at Medgar Evans. But it's, it's a huge number of people. Then they're going to open it out. They're going to find it out to the whole of Queens. I don't know if they still have vaccines when that starts. But you need to get on board. You need to get on board now. A lot of people have told me, oh, are we sure that this vaccine will help us? Here, we don't have the time to debate that. Now is not the time to debate whether the vaccine is good or the vaccine is ineffective or the vaccine should, have find, should take another five years to come. Beggars cannot be choosers. It's as basic as that. 
what have you got to lose? You have got to lose your life. So even if this vaccine is, as some people are claiming, just a placebo or distilled water, what have you got to lose to take it? Tell me, what have you got to lose if you take the vaccine? And it's all in a COVID vaccine um, uh, dial. It's from these agencies. It has a name. It comes from these um, uh, places. It's pharmaceutical companies that probably charge a lot to the American government to buy it and provide it for us free of charge. And hence, there's somebody who's accountable. So this is not something to pick up at a dam or to fish out of the river or to find on the street. This is something that's gone through a process of accountability, a process of medical development. And hence, Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer and all these um, people who have rushed to make the vaccine, we'll have to take their word for it. Because guess what? It's not going to kill you. You may more die if you don't take it. So this is where you have to make that informed um, uh, and uh, clever decision. It's free. If you don't take it, you open yourself to getting the virus and die. If you take it, it does not kill you, and therefore you'd be able to get the immunity that uh, you need to survive. So it's a simple question. It's a simple decision to make. Get the vaccine. Stop reading and, and arguing with each other, well, oh, how valid it, it is or how uh, uh, how genuine it is and, and, and all of that. You don't need that. You need to go to your college. Look, somebody, Ramona Passat said, and she said she called yesterday, and I get through a two weeks appointment. Thank you, Ramola. So Ramona Passat did the right thing. Ramona went and got her vaccine, and she got two weeks. And she don't have to wait a long time. I wish I knew how old she was. Perhaps she had, if she got it in two weeks, that means you can get it in two weeks also. And if you have uh, depression, if you have uh, high blood pressure, if you have uh, um, uh, diabetes, if you have uh, pre-diabetes, if you have high cholesterol, these are all uh, medical conditions. And like I said, Richmond Hill, Ozone Park, South Ozone Park, Woodhaven, Glendale, and all these great places in Southeast Queens, Jamaica, and so forth, the people here are not in top-notch condition. They're not athletes. They're not SEAL Navy people. They are people who have suffered and suffered and suffered and in very poor medical conditions at this point in time when you can't even go out there and get sunlight. So we're hoping that this can come to an end. Don't wait for a cure. Remember, Dr. Fossey said it is probably going to go until next year. He says that we're probably going to have to wear masks until next year. Um, so we've got to try to get on top of this and, and use the vaccines. We will not get this opportunity again. Um, this is the first time I've seen a place open up. There are several places that just uh, you know, cropped up and said, oh, by the time you go, they were all gone. Whether they give it to their insiders, whether they give it to their staff, whether they give it to their employees, whether they give it to their back door, whether they give it to the family, we don't know. But the issue here is that if you go to your college and if you go to Medgar Evans College, if you live in Brooklyn, I urge everyone to go. And even if you do not have a, a pre-existing condition, tell them your problem. They're most likely going to give you a form to fill out. And when you fill out that form, you'll be able to get your vaccine. Get the vaccine. You may have to go back in three weeks and get the vaccine. Because previously, remember, just essential workers and nurses and the people exposed to it. But you know what? Because as human beings, we, um, we move around so much. And then, thankfully, you have spring coming up. Everybody's dying to go, go outside and, you know, get some fresh air and stuff like that. We need to get on top of this thing so our community can be a safer one. Um, we can help us. We have. We can help each other out. We can get back on track. We can try to get back to a decent life, and we'll have a better life that we truly deserve. Because if you don't pay taxes, a lot of us have paid taxes for you. A lot of us have done a lot for these communities, for our other brothers and sisters, and hence you need to benefit from this blood, sweat and tears 
that we have shared for this community. We have been a self-sufficient community without any city, state, and federal help. We have helped to build Richmond Hill, Ozone Park, and South Ozone Park and Woodhaven. They have been built, resurrected, and resuscitated to the developing communities they are, to the thriving communities here. So we've got to be on top of them, you know. It's been like a dumping ground now for garbage and dumping ground for um, insults and dumping ground for accusations, false accusations about we having the highest rate. Yes, we have the highest rate, but because the people here do two and three jobs, not because they're drinking liquor in the, in the um, restaurants or the, or the stores of people have accused us of. No, it's not that. Then another thing that people say is that the men be, beat their wives in Richmond Hill. Well, I know of a lot of men, honest men like myself and, and, uh, and, and men, uh, you know, the male species that live in Richmond that do not beat their wives. They don't get involved in stuff like that. So, you know, it's not like we can't put ourselves down and say, oh, we are a community that we have a lot of domestic violence and we drink a lot of rum. That doesn't help us in any way. That, that only gives people fuel to put you down, to kick you to the curb and tell you, well, same thing I said, you know, you people come here and that is all you do to America. You know, no, they don't take food stamps. They don't go on, a, on, on, on any kind of federal assistance. And the people here work very hard, two and three jobs a day. So this is not a time for us to talk and uh, washing linen, um, dirty linen in the public, much of it of which is not proven that in the Caribbean men beat up their wives. <laughs> that is rubbish. Let's move away from that. Let's highlight the truly important issues that need to be highlighted, that we need COVID, we need resources, we need food, we need transportation, we need people to save their taxes from medallions, we need foreclosures, um, we need to stop foreclosures for homes, we need to get a decrease in property taxes, we need to help tenants to save their homes, we need to have our schools clean and open and better teachers and a better and safer environment, uh, we need a better hospital, not a dumping ground where you, you carry out people and then drop them in Potter's Field, uh, we need an emergency assistance fund set up to help this and other communities. So I'll be sending this uh, video to the mayor and to the governor. And it is an advocacy piece on behalf of all of us. You also have the right to do the same and write and call the governor, call 311, call, let them know. But first of all, I'm going to leave you now. Make sure you go to your college or you go to the vaccinefinder.com and make sure that you make an appointment online with your college. They do honor those appointments. 15 minutes of your time, 15 minutes of crucial time that will help your kids and uh, other family members and employees to have a boss or to have a father or a mother to continue to do for them, to continue to provide for them, to continue to help them continue this journey of the American dream. I know life is not easy here. And it's the same problem we have in Guyana, Trinidad, all over the world. So this is not something um, very uh, germane or specific to America. It's a worldwide pandemic and you've got to get on top of it. Never say no and never say, oh, I'm too big to wear a mask. I've seen some people just wear the mask under their um their chins so why are you wearing it for if you're going to wear the mask wear it properly or wear two there's nothing shameful about wearing a mask it is a necessary thing it shows that at least you're using your common sense people who are just walk around without a mask tell them hey put on your mask you know you look like you you're very reckless you're spreading your disease tell them that you see people without the mask tell them that but i will tell you this I always walk the length and breadth of Richmond, Loza Park, South Loza Park, Woodhaven, and South Queens. I am always out there. I have not seen anybody not wearing their masks. To the credit of our community, they have all been wearing masks. So don't accuse us wrongfully and, and you know give us a bad name when we are not the culprits. We have had the highest rate because of the systemic and institutional racism and padang and deprivation of resources and marginalization that we had. We just interviewed five controller candidates who are gonna run for city controller. And we interviewed five before with my organization. And we let them know 
that whenever you get into office, either one of you, you're not going to forget this community. You're going to put an office here. You're going to bring resources here, whether you're the mayor or whether you're the controller. You're going to ensure that we get what we deserve. We only want our fair share, and there's enough money to go wrong. The mayor has a big budget, billions of dollars. Do you know what the city controller's office uh, budget is? It is 92 billion US dollars. 92 billion US dollars. Do you know what the pension funds is? 240 billion dollars is a trustee of. 240 billion dollars as trustee and 92 billion US dollars. This is not chump change. This is a whole of Guyana and about 100 other countries' economies combined in the New York City city controller's budget alone. 92 billion US dollars. So what we are saying is that communities of color, marginalized communities here in Southeast Queens and in Richmond Hill, Ozone Park, South Ozone Park, Woodhaven, Ridgewood and so on. We need and we deserve our fair share, whether it's in um, social services, whether it's in economic services, whether it's in bread and butter issues, whether it's in the giving us a prevailing wage, whether it's in giving people $15 minimum and taking a tire, whether it's giving them affordable health and health care insurance and universal health care, whether in upgrading the hospitals and the schools. These are all things that we have earned the right to have and which must be given to us as a matter of democracy, as a matter of right. But you see, if you're quiet and you don't call the mayor 311 or call the governor or write them, like I said, our money pay them. They work for us. We don't work for them. But if you don't tell them I need this and I, I, I need these resources, I need money to bury my dead, I have a, a we don't get food to eat here or we need food. These are all legitimate and specific inquiries that must be taken care of. You deserve the right to have it. This is America. It's all inclusive. This is what the founding fathers thought of. That after civil rights and all these great things that have won for us in the past, and, past, and of course, we were so grateful for the civil rights movement. And of course, we... Um, proudly celebrate Black History Month because it's on the backs of those heroes, our black brothers and sisters, that, that our rights were also built. So we are built conjointly with them. And never forget that. That together as minorities, we stand. And together, we will succeed. So we don't worry about who's saying. Somebody's saying something here. Let me see what it is. Uh, Bobby Mumsan, we thank you very much, sir. You're always a good man. How come in the guy and he's not holding offices in the USC? Well, brother, you have to run for it. And um, you have to run and you have to get out the vote. And people have to come out and vote. And Eric Ferry, how are you doing, brother? I'm glad I saw you too. I was a uh, JP. I'm going to go back tomorrow. And um, of course, I know you will name one of the um, uh, your JP uh, trophy, the JP um, competition. I know you will do that. In, in, in favor of our brother, in honor of his memory. I'm going to try and get on the call He's, um, earlier tomorrow at the funeral. Um, at the, uh, you know, the wake, I was on board with five city council, um, city controller candidates and five uh, mayoral candidates. And we have told them in no uncertain terms that we need help here. And uh, they wanted our endorsement because, as you know, we're the second largest group. We're the second largest group. Indo-Caribbean, Guyanese, second largest group of Trinidadians and Indians, Sikhs. Guyanese alone are the second largest group in Queens. We are the second largest group in Queens. So anybody who wants to get elected must get the blessings of Richmond and Ozone Park and South Ozone, South Ozone Park. That is part of the legacy I fought for you. That is part of the history of those who have run. So, um, like my, my brother there, Na uh, Nazir Shah, is asking how come Guyanese are not elected because our people don't go out and vote. But this has taught us a lesson. We didn't get a mask. We didn't get any medicine. We didn't get any priority. We didn't get any justice. We didn't get any help to bury our dead. We didn't get any help for our small businesses. We didn't get help for people who are unemployed. And we didn't get help for uh, to save our homes in foreclosures and like in property tax reductions. And if you're going to give tenants rent or tell them don't pay the rent, 
then he got to help the landlord also. But how he's going to lose his, his house that he's fought so hard to win? Uh, 20 years of paying a mortgage, 25 years, the last two, three years, you know, come and tell a tenant, so don't pay the rent, it's okay. What nonsense is that? So I think the governor made a serious flaw there, you know, and you call him out, tell him that, you know, how, how are you going to, how are you going to, um, dig, how are you going to dig one hole to fill a hole? Why, why are you digging one hole to fill another hole? Why are you helping a tenant and you're not helping a landlord? I'm not saying tenants mustn't get help. But you got to help the landlord also because you're going to have a set of foreclosures and a, and a set of uh, people around here that live in squatting areas. And who would want to live in a community where you got five folks who are doing drugs and, uh, you know, preying on other people? That's not a civilized society. That is wrong. So these are all the things we got to fight for. Uh, we got to fight for cricket grungs. Look at, look at the York College grung. I passed there. I saw it. I'm going to ask them, we need a nice cricket ground. I would love to play cricket on that ground. It's a beautiful bat, beautiful uh, turf. You feel you're in America when you play on stuff like that. So I mean, we might have to, of course, use uh, stumps that just sit and don't bore holes. That's fine. We have equipment for that. So all these people like Leroy Comrie and all these state senators and Sanders and all them and, and so forth and Adrian Adams, they've got to open up this place for us um, because we're going to organize. Uh, we're gonna, we, you know, we we we're not gonna take this anymore. We're gonna make sure that the COVID issues are solved, and that we get our fair share because we haven't been getting our fair share, and that is a problem. And the Diwali too. Some people said we can't get an Indian holiday. That pretty facade. That's right. We need Diwali to be made a school holiday for our kids. Now, Diwali is a sacred day. It's a triumph of good over evil, and all other religions which I respect. You have two Eid holidays, as they should. You have Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah and um, the, and, uh, uh, and uh, Yannicka. Then you have all the other holidays are there. So all that Hindus are saying is that we can have that our kids don't suffer at school. They can stay home, help clean the house, prepare for this religious uh, ceremony, uh, be with the family just for that one day. It is a very reasonable request because that's a holy day. That's a triumph of good over evil. Everybody should celebrate Diwali. It's always about, always about overcoming a darkness. And Diwali is, de depicts that entire principle, a uh, triumph of good over evil. And that is something that we must um, acknowledge helps our community. America and New York City can do with a lot of triumph of good over evil and light over darkness right now. So, you know, the mayor was supposed to give us, he backed out, he's on his way out. Our school's chances on his way out. We're gonna have somebody else, we gotta lobby him. Um, I'm sure that uh, the next chancellor who's coming in, she's a woman from New York City, Miss Porter. She would be more amenable. We'd have to talk to her about that for next Diwali holiday to be made a, ho to be, uh, you know, made a school holiday so that our kids don't suffer with their schoolwork. That was the whole meaning of it. Um, to show that we can so that's about it. Uh, Preeti Prasad and um, Brian Prasad, that's a great, a great uh, thing you have brought up. A great topic. System is rigged against us. Districts are poorly drawn up as well. Brian, I give you a lot of compliments. You're a very smart guy. You've hit the nail on the head. Um, let me show you a map what we are working on. And I want you to stay close to me, Brian, because I need you to, um, I would need you to go and fight with me. We're gonna have a redistricting hearing soon. Based on a census counts, every 10 years, they draw city, state, and federal districts. And that is where the pot of money is and where the thing is, where, 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 is where we get wealth and so forth. Now, we have been gerrymandered, Brian, and you're very right about that, Brian Prasad. This is a gerrymandering here. Let us see if we can make sense of this map. You see what it did to Richmond Hill? They cut it in four. This is Richmond Hill. This is where we live. This is where we live. Here. This is where we are in, in Richmond Hill. But then you got 8038, which is with another assembly person. Then you got 8023, who's another assembly person. And then you got Richmond Hill, and then you got a Van Wyck. So all we're saying is that let us have a district drawn from Woodhaven to the Van Wyck. This is Van Wyck, Van Wyck Expressway here. 
across to um uh the um across at the bottom to the belt parkway so you have the belt parkway here and then you have woodhaven and then you have like hillside avenue and then you have coming down here is vanwick so this entire district is called little guyana and that is why little guyana where resorts war is where we have all the ad 23 pfeffer here and another the Rajkumar there, it used to be Mike Miller, South Ozone Park and Richmond Hill. This is supposed to be one. This is Little Guyana and Little Trinidad, Little India, if you want. We're Sikhs, Guyanese, and um, Bangladeshis and so forth. Then you have the Bangladeshis over here, our brothers and sisters on Hillside in Jamaica. This is Little Bangladesh. So we should just draw one district here because that is what the law dictates. That is what the Voting Rights Act called for, Amar. They call for, and it's 100% Amar Ragnar, you're quite right. How can you serve people who are living co-ops in Glen, in, in Glen Oaks and unite it with our district? Or the people in Woodhaven who live in co-ops with the one and two family homes in Richmond Hill, Ozone Park, and South Ozone Park? What commonality of issues would those people have? How would you be able to solve their problems if they're not the same? Are you going to cut one hand to spoil the other? Or are you going to serve the other? Are you going to dig a hole to fill another hole? Or are you going to cut one finger to help the other? That is not what government is about. The whole purpose of government is to put communities of like mind, communities of like needs, and communities of like composition together. You just can't separate them into four and uh, conveniently and then say, well, that is democracy. What you have here is a, is a district that has been divided into little pieces. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. This is the district we have. One, two, three, four, five. The same thing that happened up here. Four quarters. This should be united. Part gone so with Howard Beach. Part gone so with Glendale, who we have nothing in common with. Part gone here with Rochdale Village in our city council district where they have a, a, the second largest co-op. And I'm not saying they don't have their own problems. They have their own problems and issues. I fought for them also, but they're not similar to what we have in Richmond Hill. They're totally different. So any person who is representing them is being asked to, you know this term from Guyana, fetch uh, water with basket. How can you fetch water with basket? Or, or fetch, uh, yes, fetch water with basket. That means you're giving them an impossible task. And that's why Brian Passat is right, replying to Nazir, that, that the system is rigged against us. And every 10 years, they do that. But you know what? We're going to stop the rigging this year because we're going to pick at them and we're going to take them to court, to federal court, and let them know that according to the Voting Rights Act, they have done us a grave injustice. And we have to sue them and put them before the federal court so the judges will know that these guys and these people are, doing, are really suppressing minorities, suppressing people of color, suppressing immigrants this is what they're doing so how do we lobby and get the commission give us a four district withdrawing amar ragnot i want you to keep in touch with me keep in touch with my website send me your phone number inbox i will be going to lobby with a bus of people a bus load of people like we did the last time and we did get some benefits don't get me wrong but we didn't get all that we want but now we are going to ask them since it's a change committee and it's an independent redistricting community, committee. So that committee has got to show its independence and its fairness. And hence we have a better lawsuit prospects of a success in federal court because of the fact that this is an independent redistricting commission and we can show bias or, or ineffectiveness or inefficiency more readily than if it was politically controlled. So I believe that there are honorable people on the committee. We will put them to the test one we need a federal seat we need two state senate seats we need three assembly seats and we need two city council districts now we have the numbers to do it if you can only have as you say in the caribbean and in america also hold one head go out testify even if you hold a placard if you go on my uh, facebook page you will see some pictures of some folks who just joined us and they were very important because we have numbers when you're sitting on a committee like redistricting, 
and you have people holding placards in front of you and they have numbers, it counts. It subliminally tells them that they are put on notice that these folks want representation. And they will understand that the American way is to grant that representation. Or they can be dragged before a federal court for breach of the Vote and Rights Act. And that is why we have to tell them that to make them keep them honest. And they will also make sure that they do the right thing. So sometimes you've got to fight for things. Things are not going to be given to you on a platter. I have been fighting since 2000. I have got good and bad. I have been um, penalized. I have been ostracized. I have been targeted. Um, I am standing by the grace of God and by the power of the Almighty who has inspired me to bring these messages. Nobody has walked the road I have walked. It was all jungle, but I've beaten out a track for us to empowerment where we can live and have an American dream and we can have a good future also. Not only us, but for generations to come. Why is it we can't build Richmond Hill and Ozone Park, South Ozone Park, Jamaica and these places? But as soon as you get a little bit of, um, you know, you get a little bit of uh, independence, you pack up and you go to Long Island because Long Island has everything and Richmond and Ozone Park don't have it. That is wrong. We've always been doing that. Do you remember our four parents, the indentured servants, who were fooled and said you've got to pick up gold in the streets? And they brought them as indentured servants and put four or five families in a in a in a logi, 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 and dig a pit latrine and tell them, well, ten of you will use that, and five of you will sleep in this room, and the master will come and kick them and beat them with a whip. That's just a recent memory, brothers and sisters. That's just a few generations ago. They sow the seed, they planted the seed, and they made the sacrifices for us to have a better life. And having gone to Guyana and then moved over to here, we can't always be pillar to post. We can't be moving here and say, oh, let's go to Florida, or oh, let's go to Long Island. Um, this place got garbage, this place got choke and rap, this place got thief man, this place, you know, um, you know got speed bump, you know, got traffic lights. These are easy things to fix. They're all fixable. So we've got to give back to our communities. We've got to um, make our communities better. We've got to make them thrive with us. We've got to bring our ideas together. We've got to stand together. We've got to um, educate each other and be with each other in this fight. This is not an easy fight, but it's an easy fight when we all get together and do it. And it's not for one person. There's no reason why I could not be living in the French Riviera. Absolutely no reason. Or in Guyana, uh, in the um, tropics or the Bahamas or a great place. But I have a mission unaccomplished, and that is a mission to help you. Because I've seen how government works. I've seen how is what is the um, uh, recipe for success, how you get included, and how you lobby for it and advocate for it. And it's time for us to stand together and make speak with a loud, common voice, a voice that's united, a voice that is focused, a voice that is not um, personal, and a voice that caters for the needs of everybody starting from the bottom, coming up. Which brings me to the last. Uh, so that is it, Amar Ragnot. Please um, send me your phone and your email. I will keep in touch with you, Amar Ragnot, Brian Prasad. You guys, are hopefully, Pretty Prasad, Eric, and so on, we'll be able to go to that um, Ramola. We'll be able to go to the, uh, to the um, redistricting commission in a few months' time. And we'll be able to testify and let them know because other groups will be doing that. You have the Asian Americans, the Chinese folks, the Latino folks, all folks are asking for the same thing. So we've got to have our voice louder than theirs. And the fact of the matter is that we are more than them. We are the second largest population in New York City. Can you imagine that? You have more people here living in New York City from Guyana and Trinidad than you have living in Guyana and Trinidad. You have more expatriate Guyanese living here, over uh, probably a million, whether documented or otherwise, but all of whom have a voice and have the right to speak, whether legal or illegal, it doesn't matter. Guyanese people are very ambitious, but we don't have unity. Indira Prasad, Indira is quite right. 
we want we feel like a flat screen tv right in there or uh, um what is it called this other thing the mercedes benz the finest that is what characterizes us that's what make us famous or make us successful no it's not that wealth is measured in terms of political power in terms of recognition and you saw how poor we are when this COVID came and you don't understand or see what happened people were dying did anybody give you a mask did everybody anybody on top of the outside we did our part in doing this on a volunteer basis all in our communities i'm not talking about us i'm not talking about your own i'm talking about your elected officials government officials did they bring a mask did they bring a sanitizer did they bring a vaccine none of them ever brought anything to this community so we were left abandoned and and unless we have something in place we will never get so that should teach you a lesson that we have been forgotten we've been marginalized we've been ridiculed and then i said oh you have the largest vaccine you have the largest covid rate so who caused that they're the ones who cause us by neglect and when you get the highest vaccine oh, don't go to richmond oh, don't go to ozone park that's the epicenter that's the um the the uh ground zero you're gonna die there well you die anywhere else in america so let's get this in perspective as indira said Guyanese are very are, are uh, very ambitious but we don't have unity she's right we need to have become citizens register go out to vote and organize and the first test of your organization would be this um this a few months from now when we have the independent redistricting commission where we'll have a fair district that will cater for us and give us what we need and give us the um, resources that we need the senior centers um the place for our senior folks to go to um hindu centers muslim centers uh, denominations so they can feel at home, so they can continue to have bhajans and so forth sang to them and to have a life of, of ease, not a nursing home where they um, don't feel comfortable. And there should also be funding given to extended family members to care for them. And the mayor has talked about legalizing basements and attics to provide additional accommodation. So these are all things that in Borough Park, they have basements are legalized. But in Richmond Hill, you get tickets for that. You get massive tickets, tens of thousands of dollars. This is discrimination. This is unfair governance. This is selective targeting. The same thing with traffic tickets. The same thing with parking tickets. The amount of parking tickets we get here and sanitation tickets and the Department of Building tickets are like 10 times more than what you get in Howard Beach and in other places like Glendale. This is like a cash cow for them. These communities of Richmond and Ozone Park are targeted to suck the blood out of these communities, to suck the taxes out of, the, out of us, although we've paid so much and they have paid so little. So unless we, brothers and sisters, unless we wake up, as I say, and smell the coffee, we are not going to be going any, anywhere. Um, you're not doing it for Albert Baldio. You're not doing it for Dr. Philip Baldio. You're not doing it for any of us. Or, or anybody you're doing it for generations to come and you're doing it for yourself and your family so let's get that straight you need to get on board you need to do the right thing and like Indira Passat said we don't have unity we need to find unity find a commonality of purpose that is what America is all about you know we, there's an old saying that when they brought the, the, the crabs in from India from uh, in Guyana they had barrels of crabs and you had the Guyanese barrel there, and you had the other barrels from the uh, uh, from the other folks, Europeans and, and so forth. And they they only had one cover to cover the barrel. And they said you need to put it um on the not on the Guyanese one. You don't have to put there. So the man asked why you don't have to put this um this cover on the Guyanese crab barrel. And he said because Guyanese are crabs. The same thing that the India Passat is saying. They can't line up beyond one person or two persons see the right thing they're doing. They have to go behind them and pull them down. They have to be um, like that. So not all of us are like that, thankfully. We have changed and we have traversed, we have developed. Some of us were never like crabs in the first place. 
So you don't come to America with a crab mentality of pulling down each other. You try to build each other up, lift each other up. This is what the purpose of life is, to lift each other up. When are you going to lift up people? When you're six feet under or you're in the ashes? Get that. So do it now. Do it now because you need And that is why I'm telling you, go to your college and go to Medgar Evans College. Go online or make an appointment. Go there physically. Like the good person said here, they got a, uh, a vaccine for two weeks appointment from now. So you can do the same thing. So brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I agree with you, those who have lost your, our folks, your family. I pray God give us help that we can be strong to come to overcome these times. Be strong and support each other. And let us continue to fight. May God bless you all and may we overcome these problems in our community and may we have a strong community going forward. God bless you. Pranam. <clears throat> Salaamu Alaikum. Shalom. And greetings. God bless you all. Thank you. Good night and goodbye.